Hey everyone, this is a fixed axis rotation example from Kinetics and it just says that a pendulum has a mass of 10 kilograms with the mass center at G and the radius of gyration about O of 595 millimeters. If the pendulum is released from a stationary position at theta equals zero degrees, which is just up here, then we must determine the force in the joint when theta is 45 degrees. The first thing to do when answering this question is restate what they're actually looking for and that is determine the force in the joint when theta is equal to 45 degrees. Now we have a couple of assumptions that we have to make and that is that the uh, friction at the joint is negligible <coughs> oh, excuse me um, the next thing that we have to do is assume that gravity is 9.81 meters a second, which is pretty trivial, but we're going to do it anyway. The third assumption we're going to make is that these forces and couples can be resolved into forces and couples acting about the center of, gra of, the center of gravity. Or so sorry, the center of mass. So... So when we resolve those forces, they're acting at G and we have a moment acting about G as well. And the last thing we're going to do is assume that we have tangential and normal components of force. Seeing as a pendulum is always circular motion, it's it makes sense to use normal and tangential components of motion. Now, the first thing we're going to do is a free body diagram, which simply looks like this. It's just an outline of the body. I'll move this up here. It's an outline of the body. It looks something along the lines. Of, whoa, that's pretty off, but I'll try and fix that up. Okay. This point here will be O and we'll have our normal going through here with the normal force going upwards and we'll have our tangential force going in this direction. So opposing the force that's being of the, the force due to the motion of the pendulum. We've got the mass center here at G and the weight force of the pendulum going downwards. We also have the angular velocity of the pendulum, which we'll denote as omega, and the angular acceleration of the pendulum, which is alpha. We also have the angle at which at which the uh, the pendulum is to the uh, horizontal axis which in the questions it stipulates that theta is 45 degrees when we're making these calculations so the first thing that we're going to do after this is resolve all of those forces and and the couple to, or the, the moment to one force with two components and one moment acting about the center of mass. So this then becomes forgive me for my diagrams ah, terrible but anyway this is our center of mass G here we end up having our motion or the force causing motion acting in this direction which is M it's tangential so it's M R alpha and we have 
our normal force which is normal in here which is opposing the downward motion it's accelerating inwards towards the center which is m r omega squared okay so the first thing we're going to do oh, we'll just write g and o in here and we've also got a moment that's being imposed that is counterclockwise, uh, clockwise, sorry, it just goes in here. And that moment is just I alpha because it's about the mass center. Oh, it's just I alpha, which is the uh, mass moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do in this question is look at the equations of motion. And those equations of motion are simple enough. What we've got to look at is our, the sum of our moments and the sum of our forces. So the first one, the sum of the moments about the mass center is I alpha, which is simply goes to the mass, which was 10 times acceleration due to gravity, so 9.81 times the displacement. Now the displacement is a function of theta. When theta is at zero degrees, we have just, we only have this component here. But as theta extends, we only look at this component up here. So we only look at this component whenever theta it, like whenever the angle of theta increases so if we only look at that component at any given time it's just this part so it should decrease so you end up with well the radius to the center of mass was 450 mils so we'll put in 0 0.45 multiplied by cosine theta And that is just equal to our mass moment of inertia, which is the mass times the uh, radius of gyration squared, which is 10 multiplied by 0 0.595 squared times our angular acceleration. So I this term here is I and that's just alpha there and then if we make alpha the subject we end up getting alpha equals 10 times 9.81 times 0 0.45 cosine theta over 10 times 0 0.595 squared. Now we'll see straight away the mass cancels out and we're left with an equation in terms of theta for alpha or our angular acceleration. Now the next thing that we want to find is our angular velocity because we can't find our normal acceleration without angular velocity. And we know by the relation from second, um, Newton's second law of motion and that is no, F equals MA but the main thing that we want to get out of that is that omega d omega equals alpha d theta which we've proven in our kinematic section in a previous video so if you want to go and look that up you can so what we'll do is we'll substitute in our equation for alpha in terms of theta and then we'll integrate with respect to omega and theta on the left and right hand sides respectively. 
So we end up getting the integral from 0 to omega of omega d omega equals the integral from 0 to theta of 